What's up, homies? Welcome back to the channel. Matt Lurker here with you, back at it again. Today, we're talking about the worst financial decisions that other people have made. Thankfully, I'm not gonna talk about my financial sins right now. There's plenty, but today I'm gonna just blind react to this video I found of just Ask Reddit's channel of worst financial decisions. And this is from the perspective of financial consultants, CPAs, tax attorneys, and fun fact, I actually used to work in the financial planning industry. I was studying to take my FINRA Series 6, 63, and 7 exams to get licensed to be a stock broker, to sell securities to clients, and provide a financial planning experience for them. So I worked on a financial planning team of advisors, um, and, but I decided to switch my career path, which ultimately I feel like was for the better. Maybe I'll talk about that in more detail in a later video, but anyway, I think this video should be really good because I actually probably share a lot of the same perspective that some of these people might have. Before we get into that though, just destroy the like button like your crush did back in seventh grade when you asked her to go to the dance with you and she said no. Destroyed. Anyway, let's get into it. Bankers, accountants, financial professionals, and insurance agents of Reddit, what's the worst financial decision you've seen a client make? Had a client who was extremely wealthy about 8 years ago tell us he was no longer going to use our services. Last year we get an extremely angry phone call from his wife asking us why we haven't been filing their taxes. We showed her the paperwork where her husband said he was no longer going to use our services. And then she hit the fan. This dude apparently just decided he wasn't going to pay taxes anymore and didn't file a return for 8 years and had been lying to his wife. They were rich and owed almost one. Four million dollars in taxes not including interest and penalties. And oh yeah they got absolutely fried by the IRS. If you are in a relationship with someone you need to be involved in financial decisions. Never let one party handle all of the money and make all of the decisions. That is how bad things happen in both business and in relationships. That is totally true. And this stuff happens. There were plenty of clients that we had where one person would be involved with everything and the other person I wouldn't even talk to. I would talk to one client. I would never even meet their spouse or their partner or whoever. And I, all, I, all I could do was just ask, hey, how's your wife doing? Hey, how's your husband doing? Because um, we'd never meet them. They were not involved in the financial planning process, which is a total no-no. We want both people because both people need to have their goals met. And if one person's goal is to not pay their taxes, and that's a huge issue. I've seen people finance cars at over 30% interest. Yikes. Paying $500 mo for a 8 year old Mustang. And will end up paying well over 2x the car's value. Assuming they pay the loan off. Edit. Since this kinda blew up. Here's a SAR for all the active duty. American. Military people. Any loan you took out prior to either enlistment or deployment is eligible to have the rate reduced to either 6, 99 or 7, 99 percent, google it before you call your bank. As it's been a couple years and laws change. Comma all you have to do is call your creditor and provide them with your orders and they have to reduce the rate. Even retroactively. To the date you deployed, or enlisted. Again. Google it. So I have not heard of that. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, again, this, none of this video is financial advice, just entertainment, education, that's it. But I have also never had a client that stupid to take out a loan at 30% interest rate on a vehicle or an asset that's gonna depreciate, especially a Mustang of all vehicles, like get something good. Not my client. Saw a guy invest about 600K in a startup. He confirmed in the one. Five pages agreement that he was fully informed about everything going on. Please if you invest in that size. Ask a lawyer to at least review the agreement. Needless to say. Said guy's net worth is 600k less now. That's true. You should have a professional review something. At that point, you know, we have plenty of, or we had plenty of clients when I was working at this firm where they would be interested in alternative investments. Like they would ask us about cryptocurrencies, um, but we also had clients asking about, hey, I'm thinking about investing in my friend's company. People who have money wanna have influence with that money. They also wanna get a return. 
And so there's plenty of people looking for that sort of investment and they can be very lucrative, but you should also still have a professional review that investment. I had a client buy numismatic gold coins with an entire retirement account. She bought 266k worth of coins at almost double the price of bullion. I got the gold salesman on the phone and asked him to justify the reasoning and I he said it was because the dollar was paper money and worth nothing and that gold was going to go to 10,000 a coin. I, uh... This is ridiculous. I haven't even finished this yet, but this is completely stupid. Firstly, this client should not have put, what was that, $266,000 into just gold? Gold is just, I mean, it's a rock. What's it going to do for you? Yeah, money is just paper, but you can actually do things with gold, but you have to convert gold back to dollars to do anything else with it. This was stupid. I don't know who told her this was a good idea. I guess that salesman was just real slick. I don't know, but that was stupid. I asked him what he exchanged this gold for and he said well she paid me dollars. Then I said why would you accept a worthless currency for your rapidly appreciating gold currency? He cursed at me and hung up and said I didn't know what I was talking about. I still haven't met a gold salesman that can answer this. Their whole pitch is that the dollar isn't worth anything but they happily take them in exchange for gold coins. The whole thing is shite. Poor lady. She can't sell them now even with gold bullion as high as it is for anything close to what she bought them for. I am a fully registered advisor just to disclose. You gotta watch out for that. There's a lot of sleazy salesmen who just want to sell you a product, regardless of whether it's actually good for you. And so don't, don't buy something the day it's pitched to you. Unless it's like amazing, but, but still, don't buy something the day it's pitched to you by a salesman. Because if there's a salesman for it, then the, there's got to be something wrong with it. A lot of things that are really good don't need salesmen. Like Tesla, they make great cars. They don't have a marketing team. I've never once seen an advertisement for a Tesla. I mean, I guess I've seen Elon's tweets, but, you know, it's different. Worked in a family law firm. Way too common of an occurrence is a client ignoring the lawyer's advice for a balance separation agreement and instead ambushing their spouse with an agreement that says they are getting everything. Now instead of a relatively amicable breakup and maybe some mediation to sort out some sticking points it's tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in litigation costs. If you are going through a divorce play nice. The only ones that win in a bad divorce are the lawyers. That's true. That's true as well, because if you got to pay a ton of legal fees, then what are you actually getting from your ex-spouse? It's not worth it to go through that. And honestly, in most places, a judge is probably going to side with the other person if they can see that you're being a total douche. I'm a lawyer who worked on a case where an investment advisor was stealing money from his client's funds to pay for his own lavish lifestyle. Red flag right there. Don't trust an investment advisor who's always jetting off foreign countries for pleasure trips. Close bracket. One of his clients had been awarded 10 or 20 million dollars in a civil rights lawsuit. And had absolutely no clue how to handle having money. He'd buy 50 big screens. Or buy out a movie theater for private performance. And other ridiculous things just because he could. He got the idea to start a business. Delivery I think. But then he'd exhaust his divestment payment and needed money. So he then sold all the trucks for the business. Destroying it. You could really read the advisor's frustration with the dude over the emails and letters. And my guess is that the fraud started when advisor figured that he could tap into the guy's funds and the guy would never even notice. This just reminds me of anyone who wins the lottery. I, there's study after study and I don't have it in front of me. But study after study shows the people who win the lottery are broke like five years later or like one year later. I don't remember what the numbers were. Look it up. Or I guess I'll look it up when I'm editing and I'll just put it right here. Anyway, if you don't know how to handle money when you're poor, you won't know how to handle money when you're rich. If you win a settlement, you know, it's a little different from the lottery. But if you get just suddenly a large sum of money, you're not going to know what to do with it. Go to a professional, a good professional, not like one who steals your money. 1. The client who joined an MLM and racked up half a million dollars worth of losses before finally listening to us and quitting. 2. The client who spent $40k on Farmville over 3 months. 3. The clients who give their adult children allowances that exceed my salary. Fancy cars. 
and houses without expecting them to ever hold down a job themselves. I never had a client like number three because those are just super high net worth people that when you're starting out as a financial advisor, you just don't deal with those yet. But the first person who got into the MLM, which is a multi-level marketing scheme or company or whatever they want to call themselves, I definitely know people who've done that and it sucks to see that happen. If you ever have to pay for the product that you then sell, or if you have to pay for training, then it's probably an MLM and you should just stay away from it. Yes, you can make money, but statistically 99% of you won't make money in an MLM. So just stay away. Probably not the worst, but one of the more perplexingly common. Making over $250K, sometimes well over. No withholding. Not paying estimated taxes throughout the year. Can't afford the tax bill with a return every year. Then bitching because they can't afford the installment payments on the taxes they owe from two years ago. Moth Efka. Sell your gaudy asmic mansion. Take your teenage daughter's credit card away. Let your drunk driving son stay in jail and get a public defender. And tell your BTCH wife to stop spending all day at the tennis court sipping mimosas. Get your shti together and pay taxes throughout the year like the rest of us. You aren't being persecuted by the IRS. You are just an idiot. Like I said earlier, if you don't know how to handle money when you're poor, you won't know how to handle money when you're rich. These people have a situation that most of us will never have to deal with because we have an employer who takes out our taxes and we probably get a tax refund at the end of the year. If you're self-employed though, or whatever it was in their situation, you have to calculate what your tax bill is and then pay that at the end of the year. Or you can pay your estimated taxes throughout the year. That way it's not a huge sum of money at the end of the year or you know, end of the tax season. They obviously weren't doing that and they are obviously not good with money. Even though they earn a high amount, they're not good at being able to manage that money. I had a client in her 70s put her whole savings in Tilray's stock. Tilray at the time was trailing above 150 per share. I told her it was a terrible idea to put all of her savings in one investment but she told me I was wrong. She argued with me for a good 15 minutes until I relented and said okay. It's your money. So she put 300k into Tilray couple weeks later it starts dropping. I call her and get no answer. It's sitting at $6 a share now. Her account is down to about 12k. Last time I spoke with her I took no pleasure in telling her she's no longer my client. I have had that happen. Because I wasn't investment licensed all those conversations happened with another advisor present. But there were definitely clients who wanted to argue with us about whether they should have their money in stocks or whether they wanted to dump it all into one thing. Because there's plenty of people out there who don't believe in the stock market, who think that, oh, because of this new president, the stock market's gonna go down, or because of whatever, I, I don't know, the weather is bad, the stock market's gonna go down, so they don't wanna put their money in stocks. People just wanna argue. And if the client doesn't wanna to listen to the financial advisors, then they shouldn't be a client because they want to do what they want to do. They don't want to actually follow your advice. What I've seen countless times is someone who started a business with zero research. No understanding of what running a business involves. Here's a hint. Practically every business involves paperwork and deadlines. Dot. The business models come in waves. For a while it was barbecue shacks. Then it was cupcakes. Then house flippers then food trucks. I think they see it being done on TV shows that make it look fun. It isn't fun when they come to me with debt, tax levies and lawsuits, IRS and state labor department and health department on their backs, and suppliers taking them to court for unpaid bills. Some of them cashed out their retirement accounts to buy a business. Others put their house up as collateral for an SBA loan. It's a nightmare. If they had come to an accountant first, we might be able to help them, or even better. Dissuade then. I usually see them after 18-24 months of screw ups and by then it's usually too late to rescue them. Two points there. Accountants do a lot more than just file taxes in March. So look into what they can actually do for you if you wanted to start a business. A little side story here though, I had this roommate in college and you know who I'm talking about, you know, if you're watching this video, we're, we're not really friends, but 
I, I'm sorry for what, no, no, you know, I'm not sorry for what I'm about to say. It would be a stupid idea. Um, I had this roommate who thought it'd be a good idea to start a unicycle business where he'd like sell unicycles or like have a shop dedicated to unicycles. Um, th there's no scalability with that. There's no interest in that product. There's no, how do you branch out from that? Like, yeah, you can do bikes as well, but his deal was just unicycles. That's all he wanted to do. Not an advisor. Here are the dumbest things I've done. One hired a financial planner instead of learning basic investing. Two not putting my saving in low cost, expense ratio, funds and instead complicating my portfolio with risk and cost. Three not staying fully investing during volatile market conditions and simply riding it out. Four repeatedly checking my accounts instead of set it and forget it. This is huge because I feel like more people do this than they realize. People get a financial planner when maybe they don't need one because really before getting a financial planner, you need to really assess for yourself what kind of person you are. Do you want to play the active role? Do you want to do everything for your financial well-being? If so, you may not actually need a financial advisor. You could probably find a lot of good information on the internet like every one of my other videos or other people's videos. Um, and you can make those decisions for yourself. You can find out good investments. You can be in broad index funds. Even when the market's up and down, instead of pulling all your money out and then getting back in once it's, you know, leveled out and the market's at a new high, just ride it out. Market's going to go up over time, but you need to be able to make those decisions about whether or not you're going to be the one taking that role or whether or not a financial planner should do that for you. I've had a client where I noticed this guy's credit debt always remained hovering $13k to $15k. I asked him why he only makes minimum payments on his credit card instead of paying it off. Because I see he has roughly $11k sitting in a bank account. Interest per month on that credit card bill is roughly $250. And according to his repayment patterns it will take him roughly 19 years to pay it all off. His answer to me is the bank charges him $7.99 per month for his bank account if his balance dips below $10k. So to save the $7.99 per month this guy is paying $250 in interest on his credit card. This is one of the worst ways to rack up debt. If you're using credit cards as a way of revolving debt and not paying off that balance, then you are racking up one of the highest interest rates in the entire financial services industry. You need to pay off your credit card debt immediately. Do that before your home loan, your car loan, everything else. Pay off your credit cards. I work for a bank. One of our branches had a customer who was basically homeless. Then, he wins the lottery. Over the next few months, the staff watched him come in to withdraw thousands of dollars every day to spend on extravagances. Everyone tried to convince him to sit with a financial advisor to help him make the most of his money. Less than a year later, he's in slightly better shape than when he started. He's at least able to live in the car he bought. So that went a slightly different direction than I was expecting. I thought it'd go completely broke. That was a nice little caveat at the end. But yeah, anyone who wins the lottery, they're gonna be broke in a year because if you're not good with money now, you're not gonna be good with money later. Do your research and educate yourself, please. Please don't destroy your entire life or your entire life savings by making a massive financial mistake. Watch some videos, read an article or two, or ask a professional. Find a good advisor that you trust from a friend, ideally who can help you make good financial decisions. Some of these people, that lady who sunk her entire retirement savings into one stock, went from 150 bucks a share to $6 a share or 12, whatever it was. Do not be that person. Make good financial decisions. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that now and I'll catch you again Tuesdays and Thursdays. I love you guys and I'll see you next time.